Good morning. My name is Christine Tumians. I'm the zoning administrator. It's 10.30 a.m. and I'm calling this meeting of the zoning administrator to order. The first item of business is approval of the minutes for October 17th, 2024 draft minutes. Um, I'm approving the draft minutes um, as submitted. Um, but before I do that, if you're attending in person and wish to make a comment on the draft minutes, please raise your hand. Seeing no one raise their hand, I will approve the minutes as submitted with no changes. Moving on to non-agenda public comment. We are now taking public comments on non-agenda matters. This is the time when any person may address matters not listed on this agenda, which are within the subject matter jurisdiction of this committee. If you're attending in person and wish to make a comment, please raise your hand. So this is for items not on the agenda. Seeing none, I will close the public comment. Moving on to this uh, statement of purpose. The zoning administrator is appointed by the Planning and Economic Development Director and has the responsibility and authority to conduct public meetings and hearings and to act on applications for minor or reduced review authority projects or entitlements. A determination or decision by the zoning administrator may be appealed to the Design Review Board, Cultural Heritage Board, Planning Commission, or City Council as applicable to the decision. All actions taken by the zoning administrator may be appealed within 10 calendar days. If the final day of the appeal period falls on a non-business day, the appeal period will be extended to the, to the next business day. There are no zoning administrator reports, and there are no consent items. So we'll be moving on to the first scheduled item. Item 6.1, minor conditional use permit for a res for, um, residential fence at 6496 Spring Creek Drive, file number CUP 22-071. And this is a project that proposes a legal legalize a six foot seven inch tall wood fence is located within a 50 foot or a side setback and planner apartment will present thank you zoning administrator two minutes i am the project planner for this application again for a fence that's located in a or side setback at a residential home located at 3496 Green creek drive this is an application to obtain approval of a minor conditional use permit for allowing a fence of additional height, um, totaling in six feet and seven inches, um, located within the corner side yard setback uh, at the house that's Green Creek Drive. Uh, the fence material is wood and there will be proposed landscaping placed in front of the fence. This is just uh, an aerial view of where the property is located. As far as the vault? Yes. The general plan and zoning, uh, or the general plan land use designation is low density residential, and the zoning district is single family residential, which does allow for uh, work, I guess I should say, residential offenses are common. The R1 zoning district um, is applied to areas within the city that are intended to be maintained as residential neighborhoods, comprised of detached and attached single family houses, clustered residential hillside projects, and small multifamily projects, together with compatible accessory uses. And the R1 uh, zoning district is um, compatible with the low density residential um, general plan land use designation. So this is the site plan. Um, I'm just going to use the mouse here to just kind of locate that this is the location of the fence, which is about five and a half feet um, back from the sidewalk. This is the street here, Spring Creek Drive. And then this is to show, uh, I guess, where the fence um, would be located if it was outside of the corner side setback. And it, um, I did confirm that the fence is located outside of the Vision Triangle. These are some site photos. Um, the original height um, was a little over seven feet. I believe it was like seven feet, two inches. And the applicant has agreed to take it down to six feet, seven inches. 
and there are um, there is landscape again there is landscaping proposed and the uh, materials details material sheet for that was within the project description. Um, staff was able to make all findings and are rec recommending approval of this application. I did receive an email um, a couple days ago, actually, um, and the comment stated that it is, I will quote, the most beautiful fence so far in the entire neighborhood. And since the street on the left side of the fence is a dead end, it does not seem to block or obstruct the circulation of vehicles, and neither does it seem to be of any danger to the traffic passing by. Um, just to kind of a little blurb of what their email said. Um, and with that, oh, and the proposed project has been reviewed uh, in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act uh, for section 15303, and that the proposed fence is an accessory structure. So it is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the zoning administrator by resolution approve a minor conditional use permit to allow a six foot seven inch tall wood fence located with a corner side setback at 3496 Spring Creek Drive. And this is my contact information if anyone has any questions and we do have the applicant available uh, via Zoom if you have any questions for them. Thank you. Thank you, Planner Hartman. Is the applicant present and wishing to add to the presentation? Hello, yes, I'm here. Um, I just want to say, um, you know, I did everything I could to make this comply to all rules. And, um, if you were in the, in that, in front of the house, you would see that all the neighbors that can view the property are kind of, you know, looking in a different direction, right? This doesn't really affect other neighbors. Um, it's not intrusive to them. And this just allows us to have a little privacy and use more of the property. And that's why we, we designed it this way. Um, also, the backyard is, you know, like two feet higher than the front yard. That's another reason why the height of the fence is what it is, because otherwise, if it was lower, you'd be able to just look right into the yard. And one of the main ingredients to this is to make it, you know, add more privacy and use more of the property. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if you're um, attending in person and wish to make a comment, please raise your hand. Seeing none, um, uh, I agree that um, the fence doesn't appear like it would make a, a visual obstruction or um, visual hazard for passing motorists or uh, pedestrians or bicyclists. Um, it does appear to be attractive. It would be more attractive if there were additional landscaping other than gravel or rocks, but um, it does add something attracted to the neighborhood. So um, with that, um, I can also make, uh, agree with your findings, I can make the findings. Oh, thank you. Um, and I will close the public comment. Um, and so with that, I'll be approving um, minor conditional use permit, uh, is it? CP22-071. Three four nine six Spring Creek Drive. <laughs> and before moving on, I just want to make an announcement uh, for item six point four. It's a public meeting for Pura Vida Recovery Services. It's a minor conditional use permit at one five zero six Roan Drive, CUP twenty four dash zero four one. Someone from the public requested that this be a public hearing, and because of that, this item. <laughs> Um, is going to be continued to a future uh, meeting date, not be heard today, will be re-noticed uh, re -noticed as a public hearing. So if you're here for that item, um, that will not be presented today. Moving on to item 6.2. Please note this action is final unless an appeal is filed with the city clerk's office within 10 calendar days of today's decision this item. <clears throat> that date is November 18th, 2024. Moving on to item 6.2. This is a conditional use permit for a mobile food vendor, Momo Man at 1750 Santa Rosa Avenue, file number CUP 24-033. And Planner Isla will be presented. 
Thank you. So new and short opinions. Um, my name is Ishmael Bisla, and the item before you today is a minor conditional use permit application for the Momo Man food truck at 1750 Santa Rosa Avenue. Um, the mobile food vendor will be located in the parking lot of the Santa Rosa Food and Liquor Store with an adjacent seating area. The first hours of operation are 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily, and they will be using five of the existing 18 parking spaces located on site. <clears throat> Here is an aerial view um, of the area in which the proposed food truck will be located. The general plan land use designation is retail and business services, and the zoning for the site is general comfortable. Here's the site plan. Um, so the green box you see down there is where the food truck will be located. There will be seating uh, directly adjacent to it, as well as trash, recycle, and compost. Um, they will be using five of the existing 18 parking spaces, which leaves 13. Um, and the, the, the store use, the liquor store, requires 10 parking spaces, so there will still be adequate parking after the truck goes in. Um, and there is residential to the right of where the truck will be located. And the, there's about a 60 foot or so gap um, in between the location of the truck and residential uses. The proposed project is categorically exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act. Um, the food truck is a minor temporary use of land and will not be altering the land or having any permanent effects on the environment. There are no unresolved issues as a result of staff review, and we have not received any public comment. Um, and staff analysis has concluded that all of the findings for a minor conditional use permit can be made. Therefore, it is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the zoning administrator by resolution approve a minor conditional use permit to allow a mobile food vendor, the Momo Man Food Truck at 1750 Santa Rosa Avenue. And for any questions or comments, this is my contact information. Thank you. Thank you. Is the applicant present and wishing to make any comments? I'm happy. I, I don't have any comments. Thank you. Uh, if you're attending in person and wish to make a comment, please raise your hand. Seeing none, I will close the public comment. I see that your proposed hours of operation are 11 to 9. Um, I'd like to add a condition that your um, hours end at 9 p.m. because you are close to residential. So I will recommend that you add that condition to the resolution. Um, with that, um, I agree it's a good location um, and I can also make the findings. And with that, I will be approving um, CUP 24-033. Uh, please note this action is final unless an appeal is filed with the city clerk's office within 10 calendar days for this item that date is November 18, 2024. Moving on, item 6.3, public meeting, minor conditional use permit for Pura Vida Recovery Services, a community care facility at 6701 Montecito Boulevard, file number CP24-040. Honor Sheikh Holly will be presenting. Good morning. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. The project before you is a minor conditional use permit located on 6701 and 6705 Montecito Boulevard. The project is a minor conditional use permit for an eight bed care facility. The applicant has already obtained a license for the six bed and they want to add two additional beds to the existing house. There won't be any expansion of the house and the accessory unit on the site will be remain as a office. So no new beds will be added to the unit there. Here is where the project is located. The house is at the front where we'll have all the beds and the office will be in the second unit in the back. 
the project is zoned residential, RR40, and the general plan land use is low density residential. Community care facilities up to six beds are permitted by right in residential zones, and anything more than six will require a minor use permit approval. State also requires 300 feet distance from other residential care facilities. Staff has checked with the state and it was confirmed there are no other care facilities within 300 feet from the site. And here is overall floor plan of the site where the beds and bedrooms will be located. And staff has received only one call from a neighbor which had general questions about the six bed and eight bed and the of location of the map that showed two parcels were um, in county. So it was just general questions and the caller was referred to contact also the applicant for some other additional questions. This project has been reviewed in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act and qualifies for a class one exemption. It is addition of two beds to existing home. And with that, the Planning and Economic Development Department recommends that the Zoning Administrator by resolution approve a minor conditional use permit for the property located at 670 and 6705 North Pacific Boulevard. The applicant is available here. Yeah. Also, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is the applicant present and wishing to add to Honor State College's presentation? Here, but I won't. Thank you. Um, is there anybody um, in the audience wishing to make a public comment? Please raise your hand. I will close the public comments. Since I know that hands are raised. Um, this is an addition of two beds to an existing facility. Um, there are no additional, uh, there's no issues with over concentration. And the part of the will be sufficient. Yeah. So I'm, I'm able to, I agree with your findings, I'm able to put the findings. So with that, I'll be able to approve. CUP 24 040 at 6701 Montecito Boulevard. Please note this action is final unless an appeal is filed at the city clerk's office within 10 calendar days. This item, that date is November 18th, 2024. Thank you. Again, um, just to repeat my previous announcement for item 6.4, public meeting, Pure Vita Recovery Services, minor conditional use permit, 1506 uh, Road Drive, CUP 24-041. Member of the public requested a public hearing for this item. Um, this would require uh, noticing. This item will be uh, this item. Um, I forget when it's going to be. Is Hana available? December fifth. We renoticed for December fifth. Uh, we require additional noticing, so not just the postcard. There'll be a, a sign posted on the property and an added paper. <clears throat> so there's additional noticing requirements for a public hearing. Um, so we will not be hearing this item today. It'll be um, re-noticed um, at a future date. So um, skipping over item 6.4, we'll move on to item 6.5. Public meeting. Hillside development permit for exterior changes and sloped areas at 3605 Kelsey Knowles, file number HDP 24-001. Planner Briscoe will be presented. Thank you, Mr. Zoning Administrator. And the project in front of you, good morning. The, the project in front of you today is Valley Hall Hawkins, and they're proposing to add a deck at the rear of the property. And this is located at 3605 Kelsey Knowles. The proposed project is to install two concrete terrace surfaces, including landscape walls, and to add a 48-inch high stucco landscape along the south, south eastern side of the property. Here's a um, general plan land use destination. It's very low residential, and that is consistent with the with this specific plan development document, which is PD 98-002. That's RC because this is a Missouri city, and they're both. And the plan, the, the plan development and the general plan land use designation are consistent. And they are intended for 
the zone, the plan that development document is intended for hillside development in this area of the city. And general plan land use, land use destination is intended for single family homes, which is which this project is about. And here's the neighborhood context. And as you can see, there's <clears throat> there's few neighbors that will be be affected by the visual by the visual impact of adding a deck at the river that house. And here's the site plan. And at this time, there are no unresolved issues as a, as a result of staff review, and we have not received any public comments to date. Uh, staff analysis has concluded that all findings can be met. And this project was found, found to be in compliance with the California Environment, Environmental Quality Act pursuant to CEQA guidelines section 15303, section E. The project is categorically exempt from CEQA because the new terrace is an important use to the main dwelling. Thus, it is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Administrator approve a hillside development to allow concrete terrace at 3605 Kelsey Nose. And to the bottom my, to the bottom left of my screen is my contact information if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Planner Briscoe. Is the applicant present and wishing to add to Planner Briscoe's page? Okay. Um, I did review the plans. I appreciate the walls aren't very tall, so uh, you have very low terraced walls, so they aren't very prominent. Um, being that it is an upsloped lot, um, uh, the main house does somewhat uh, block the view of the, the hill and the terrace. Um, and there was some grading that occurred when placing the house to begin with. So, um, so I do appreciate the, the design and uh, the low terrace walls. Before I move on, uh, if you're attending in person and wish to make a comment, please raise your hand. None, I will close public comments. Uh, I'm able to... Uh, Make the findings and I agree with Planner Briscoe's findings. I have no additional conditions to add and we'll be approving file number HDP 24-001-3605 Kelsey Knowles. Thank you very much. Moving on to item six. And please note this item of uh, this action is final unless appealed. An appeal is filed with the city clerk's office within 10 calendar days uh, for this item that date is November 18th, 2024. Moving on to item 6.6, this is a public meeting hillside development permit for a residential structure at 3731 Joeville Place, file number HDP 24-003. Good morning, it's me again, and the project in front of you is, du is the Duville Rebuild located at 3731 Duville Place. And the proposal is a split level two story rebuild that is 10% larger than a pre fight structure. And pursuant, to, and pursuant to zoning code section 20-28.100F, if, if a rebuild is above 10% of the original footprint, it can, the reduced review authority, it can, this is now reduced to being in front of the zoning administrator instead of going to the planning commission. And the required, required entitlement for this is a hillside development. Whereas this used to be a major hillside development, but now it's a minor hillside development. So it's only called 20-20-100.F. Here's the neighborhood context of where this project is located and proposed. And the general plan line use designation is low density residential. And this plan development document, document is PD 72-001H-RC. And both of those are consistent with each other. And here's the site plan of the school level rebuild, two-story rebuild. And this project has been found in compliance with the California Environment, Environmental, Environmental Quality Act. And it's categorically exempt for this project. This pro proposed project consists of one single family dwelling. And at this time, there are no resolved issues as a, as a result of staff review and no comment, public comments have been received to date. And, all, and staff has found that all findings can be met. Thus, it is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Administrator approve a minor hillside development permit to allow a split level two story rebuild at 3731 Deville Place. And at the bottom left of my screen is my contact information if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Planner Briscoe. Um, is the applicant present and wishing to add to the presentation? 
I have nothing to add. So I, <laughs> you. Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm here to answer any questions. Is there anyone from the public wishing to make a comment? Yes. Well, I have some questions. Yes. Um, how many square feet is the lowest trunk? When one moment, sir, we have to get the timer up for public comment. Oh, okay. It's not, it's, <clears throat> it's not meant to be a back and forth. So if you would mind asking all of your questions in one, uh, that would be excellent. Just a moment. Go ahead. Um, square footage for the proposed dwelling. I'd like to know by how much it exceeds 10% of the previous footprint. This property, this property, uh, this property also has a, a undivided 6% interest in the private road that fronts it. And uh, there are there are ten cut out parking spaces, and I'd like to know how implementation of this project would affect the use of this private road. And I'd also like to know um, who has jurisdiction for enforcing traffic violations that occur on a private road. So I can answer the private private road uh, question. Um, was there an exhibit A included with this? While we look that up, um, can, can the ask and answer the square footage question? I wrap my hands. <laughs> Would you like me to answer this question? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. The original home was uh, 2,832 square feet. This one five square feet, so 173 feet over. It's 73 feet. Over the original home. Oh. Less than 10%. Um, parking, you know, these cold sacks are always difficult, but it has two apron spaces in front of the garage. So we'll have to do garage spaces as well as the apron spaces are off street. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's in keeping with the uh, existing houses on the, the, I think the that's video. Parking. Would you like to close the room? Uh, do we we'll have a back and forth? Okay, I'm gonna. Um, so, um, Planner Briscoe is going to um, connect you with our engineering department, which um, um, can address uh, the private road situation and how that's usually so typically private roads are addressed in a civil matter between neighbors but um, I'm not entirely sure what the situation is in this in this subdivision so um, he can connect you with our engineering department which could shed some light on the situation so uh, if you'd stick around um, 
we can get your information and we can connect you with our engineering department. Um, and uh, hopefully get down to the bottom of the, the road questions. Okay. Very good. Thank you. So I will close the public comment period. Um, I appreciate the design avoids the 25% slope areas, um, um, taking advantage of the flatter portions of the lot. Um, I'm also able to um, make all your findings, I agree with all your findings. Um, with that, I'll be approving HDP 24-003. Uh, please note this action is final unless an appeal is filed with the city clerk's office within 10 calendar days. Uh, for this item, that date is November 18th, 2024. Um, that concludes our business for this meeting. So we are now adjourned.